Okay, so we're going to look at products of vectors, and basically this is the equivalent of multiplying scalars together. But of course, uh, in the first case, we're going to get a scalar back from two vectors. In the second case, where we do the cross product, we're going to get back a vector. So that's really the reason why we have two different uh, products for vectors, dot product and cross product. And when we look at them, uh, we'll see that there are actually different applications for each. So looking at the dot product the first, because that's the easiest of them, we take two vectors and what the dot product does is it sort of shows not only the uh, product of, of the, the uh, magnitudes of each, uh, but it also considers how parallel they are. Now if two vectors are basically parallel, we take the dot product of them, we're going to get the product of the magnitudes. However, the greater the difference in angle, the smaller the product is going to be, and when they become perpendicular, your product is going to be zero. So again, uh, here's an example of two vectors. We have vector A and vector B. We're taking the dot product here. Again, we multiply the two magnitudes of each, and then cosine theta Theta represents the angle between the two. Now, in this case, we've chosen a fairly large angle. Okay? Um, so, uh, basically, we've gone beyond 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees. We're going to get a negative product here because this factor is pointing off in this direction, and this is almost anti-parallel. So, here we see the magnitude of each factor, okay? 10 for A, 7 for B. And then we multiply it by the cosine. Again, you go past 90 degrees, cosine becomes negative. Cosine of 145 degrees is negative 0.819. And that gives us a dot product of negative 57. So, um, again, dot product. Your input here, two vectors. Your output is going to be basically scalars. Another way of looking at this, instead of using cosine, completely equivalent, is to take each of the components, the x components, the y components, the z components, take the product of each, and then add them all together. That gives you the same effect as if you're doing cosine. Now again, we notice that we've introduced a third dimension right here. Normally we're just using two right here, but uh, this can be done in three dimensions because obviously vectors are three-dimensional. Later on, we'll see that we do use the dot product. The dot product is used in calculating uh, mechanical energy, in this case, work. And work is a scalar. Energy is a scalar value. So when we take one vector, force, we take the dot product with respect to displacement, okay, we can calculate the total energy that was done by that particular force on whatever we're acting on. In this case, we'll uh, use the x and the y components of a vector um, instead of using cosine theta, just to show you how different components come together here. So we have 5 newtons in the x direction, 10 newtons in the y direction. Notice I've used i hat and j hat. Probably won't do that very much when we get to work, but again, this sort of just separates it into its x and y components. We look at the displacement, it moves 20 meters in the x direction, 5 meters in the y direction. And now, I'm just going to multiply this component times this component, add it to this component times this component, and I will get the work that's done. In this case, newtons times meters, we haven't gone over this yet, but newtons times meters gives me joules, that's the unit for energy. And again, you can see the different breakdown here. Uh, there's no z component, so we pretty much just left that out. There should be a Z here, but no worries there. Um, this is basically in a two-dimensional plane. So again, when we're looking at the scalar product of two vectors, um, you know, here's vector A and B. Uh, this uh, angle phi represents, you know, basically the angle between the two vectors. And the smaller that becomes, the greater cosine becomes okay, and the closer to one that we get. Another way of looking at this is to actually see 
what is the part of B, okay, which is um, parallel to uh, A, and then multiply the parallel component of B to A. And again, remember when we said that uh, when we have two vectors and they're parallel, the dot product is just the, the um, product of the vectors. So again, we can see uh, how dot product works. The input that we, put, we, we give is going to be uh, two vectors going in. The output that we get is we get a scalar. Cross product is a little more complicated. Here the input becomes two, is still two vectors, okay? We use this uh, x to symbolize cross product as opposed to the dot, which is dot product. And here we're actually taking a matrix, I guess technically it's, it's a, a determinant. Um, it's been a while since I've had linear algebra. And we're multiplying the uh, different components. And what you notice here is when we do the multiplication, uh, again, vector in, vector out, the different components of each, the y component of A, it's going to be multiplied by the z component of b, but it's going to point in the x direction. So x, y, z, you're going to really have a mix of all of these. Okay? So looking at this, and the definition for cross product actually has these different components, you're going to get a vector which is perpendicular to both. So if a is going in the x direction, b is going in the y direction, sort of a an unusual case. Your cross product's result is going to be in the z direction. Now, um, this is very difficult to remember. There are six different terms here, and uh, remembering each of the six uh, takes some, you know, pretty good working memory. However, if we look at this, we can actually come up with a simpler way to remember this. We're going to take this this matrix right here, and we're going to multiply it. The easiest thing to do is to take each of these 3 by 3s, uh, duplicate it and put it side by side, and run one diagonal through each of the components one way, and then a diagonal the other way to get your different components. So we're going to see this. These yellow components represent all of our positive values. So A, Y, B, Z, I hat, notice it goes through the x direction, the y component of A, the z component of B, all these yellow represent positive components. We do the same, but in the opposite direction, again going diagonally, and we get our, all our negative components. So going back to the original right here, where we have these six components, we can actually come up with them um, a little bit more directly. Uh, or a little bit easier to remember through this method right here. Okay? Now, um, cross products we use later on when we do torque. Again, we've sort of seen this at a very general high level. Um, many of the times we can actually calculate the cross product by taking two vectors and then taking the sign between the angle of them. That's actually an easier way especially when you're dealing with two-dimensional vectors. You get the magnitude of the result, but um, you don't get the actual direction. That you'd have to use a right-hand rule to find. So in this case, consider a force being applied to a wrench. This is in our later chapters with torque. Um, the position vector represents where the force is being applied. If we take F cross R, the location of the force, crossed with the position that the force is applied, we call a lever arm, we can get the torque on this. And what's interesting here is we've got the force and position vector in the xy plane. The torque is going to be in the z direction because it represents the axis at which we rotate. Okay? So again, here is our example uh, for force. Here's our example for um, our position vector, 
Now notice we don't have any Z components, so it's going to really make this much simpler. We put these two together. We notice most of the components line up with zeros. Okay? Like this is a zero, this is a zero. Only this Z direction, 50 newtons, and the negative 0 0.05 meters. Only they line up. Same thing here, only the Z component lines up. And when we put this together with the former one, we can get the exact torque. Okay? Now again, with cross products and dot products, we're probably going into more detail than we really need for this course. If you're going on to mechanics courses, you're going on to higher level physics courses, it is important that you really do understand the dot product and the cross product. So, um, and again, this shows that uh, your cross product vector is always perpendicular to the original two vectors. All right. And again, we'll, we'll talk more about this later on and how the right-hand rule applies. Okay.